here I am at the White Lodge in Richmond Park, London. Now, there's no prize for guessing why the word white is part of its name. So, uh, construction commenced here in the Year of Grace 1727 and was completed three years later. So, it was, it was the year that George II um, uh, acceded to the Britannic throne that they started to build it. And uh, here we are in this large park. We'll do a 360 later, show you the extent of the place. Um, and it was a hunting lodge because this had been a royal park for, for centuries. This is called the New Lodge for a while. This is also an old lodge, which I don't think no, any, stands any longer. So um, George II spent some time here, Queen Caroline as well, um, the, the first ever Prime Minister, Sir Robert Walpole. He um, visited them here frequently and he was allowed to stay for weeks on end. And uh, we were sort of 10 miles from, from London in those days, obviously um, over the uh, bumpy, uh, muddy roads in your horse-drawn coach. Uh, what else about it? So it's been in and out of royal hands um, into the, into the mid-20th century. So other monarchs uh, spent a lot of time here as well. Well, Princess Amelia was here for some time, not that she was a monarch. Um, and just want to think who else was, was prominent here. Well, Queen Victoria, th she thought it would be a fantastic place for her um, son and heir, Edward VII, to grow up when he was Prince of Wales, um, because she thought it was relatively secluded and could keep him away from temptation. Uh, he was, uh, it was later said, a corpulent voluptuary, somebody who was seemed to have this hole in his life to be filling with alcohol, food, um, cigars, well, King Edward cigars, women, gambling, and so forth. Um, was a man with a predilection for all sorts of vices. He, he was an addictive personality. Um, it wasn't into, into drugs, about the only thing he wasn't into uh, of all these vices. Um, anyway, so um, he found it incredibly tedious here. He was under the tutelage of various tutors, Anglican clergymen like the Reverend Gibbs, uh, his Latin tutor, did, didn't like it one bit was very keen to break free. Later, when he was commissioned into the army, sent to Ireland, obviously we're part of the United Kingdom at the time, was in the Curragh of Kildare, just to the west of Dublin. Um, so uh, then fast forward a little bit, um, Prince Eddie spent some time here. He was the eldest son of King George V. And um, Prince Eddie was, was Queen Victoria's eldest grandson, as in he was in line to the throne, but he died of pneumonia um, at the age of 27. And he spent some of his life here. He's a chap who was, um, uh, had as his, his tutor J.K. Stephen, as in people, one of those who's wrongly suspected of the, of the Jack the Ripper murders. But uh, James Kenneth Stephen, cousin of Virginia Woolf, as in she's Virginia Stephen, that's her maiden name, but he definitely wasn't him for reasons I might adumbrate uh, other times. So uh, Prince Eddie's uh, younger brother was, um, uh, let me see, George V, sorry. So Prince Eddie was the, the eldest son of Edward VII, I should say. So Prince Eddie, Albert Victor was his actual name. Prince Eddie was due to marry um, May of Tech. Okay, Mary, who she later became, but as he died, she married his brother, George V. How would you feel about that, ladies? You're due to marry one bloke, he dies, say, okay, well, I'll marry his younger brother the next year. Might seem distinctly wrong to you. But um, anyway, it was here in this uh, relatively isolated place, quite healthy, away from the bustle and the grit of London, that. Um, uh, the Queen Mary, she was then a princess, um, was delivered of her first child, a bonny baby boy, whom they um, uh, named, I'm just trying to think of it, um, uh, is it El Edward Albert Christian George Andrew Patrick David, who later became known as King Edward VIII or indeed the Duke of Windsor. So he was born here um, in 1894. Um, and his brother, George VI, uh, joined him a, a year later. And he was christened here in one of the rooms in the, in the green drawing room by the Archbishop of Canterbury, who was, of course, the highest priest in the realm. Uh, but anyway, various other people um, were lent it by the king to live here. Viscount Sidmouth, when he was prime minister, um, and um, uh, Viscount Leo Fairham, the early 1920s, the first minister for air, who also owned... Um, also owned what's it called that country's retreat checkers the prime minister's uh, countryside retreat in buckinghamshire so when lord leo ferrum died he um he left checkers to the nation saying the prime minister should have a country retreat he realized that uh, with the labor party growing strong that not all prime ministers could be relied upon to have a country estate so and it's still the prime minister's uh, country retreat to this day uh, anything else about um, uh, the White Lodge, I should say? Um, really, but by the 1950s, the royal family were no longer uh, 
no longer using it, so it was rented out. And from 1956, it became where the Royal Ballet School is based. So the, the building is the White Lodge, and the Royal Ballet School is the institution which is housed here, which was previously in other locations. So this is this is the the lower part of it for children, I think, age 11 to 16. Beyond that age, you need to go to the Royal Ballet in, in Covent Garden in the centre of London. The Royal Ballet and the Royal Opera House share the same building. I think the building in Covent Garden is actually called the Royal Opera House, but the ballet performed there as well. So um, one thing I'm not clear about this, because ballet is really not my thing, is do, is it a real school? Do they do lessons in all subjects or not? Um, I'm not sure. Do they only come in for ballet lessons? This being a very um, plush part of South West London, I imagine there are a lot of upper middle class parents who'd be keen for their little beauties to be um, dancing ballet. It's half term, so nobody's around. We can film here without fear of people thinking we're here with any immoral intent. So anyway, I just showed you just how unconquered this place is. Um, uh, completely um, wild, never been put under the plow. Uh, so uh, it really does feel like it's rural. With the, with the wild deer around. Okay, that's enough from the White Lodge in Richmond Park.